Even after being a UX designer for a few years now, I still get really anxious before presenting any designs, but I found that this one tool that I'm about to show you really made me feel much more in control. And wait, before you decide to leave or skip straight to the tool, we have to do a few things to check and prep before we get there. And you're gonna wanna listen to these because not only did they make me a better presenter, but they also made me a better UX designer. Let's first start by grounding yourself. Like any good UX design process, you need to first figure out what the core root of the problem is. Not the symptoms, the real core root. And how do we get there, you ask? Is by asking why. So why are we presenting in the first place? Let's go back to the basics. For me at least, it's to get buy-in from stakeholders, get approval, get that green light baby so I can move on with the rest of my life. Now, why is it so challenging? Why is presenting such a scary thing? And again, for me, it's because I'm afraid that I actually won't get that buy-in. Why don't you think you're gonna get buy-in? Well, it's because your stakeholders that you're presenting to weren't there during your design process. That's right, they have no idea why you designed the way that you did. So how do we solve this? Let's get to the solution. How do we get those stakeholders that we're presenting to to understand why we designed something instead of only showing them what we designed? And that, my friends, is to empathize with them. Any good UX designer knows that one of the keys to a successful user experience is to have compassion towards your users. And just like how you design for all different types of people, you need to gain perspective. You need to walk in the shoes of those who you're presenting to. So you're gonna wanna ask yourself the following. Who is this presentation for? What part of the design are they gonna care about the most? And what are their personal goals for this design? Once you've identified and collected these answers, you're gonna wanna keep reminding yourself of them because this is essentially going to be the North Star while you lay out this tool that I'm about to show you. Now we're finally ready for this presentation tool and I call it the Rationale Toolbox. You're basically going to be role playing the people that you'll be presenting to. All right, so let me show you how I usually do this. First, set up a document for your rationale toolbox. I use Google Sheets, but choose whatever works best for you as this is only for you and you'll see why. Then you'll add a simple section for what you're presenting and then a column for why you're presenting it. For this example, I'll say that I'm presenting a homepage for a website and then the column next to it will title it Rationale. Once you're ready, you'll start adding questions to the document as if you were the stakeholders listening to your presentation. So for this example, let's say we know that Mary has asked about autoplay carousels before. So add her question, what happened to the autoplay carousel I mentioned? Now you'll go to the next column and answer those questions with your rationale and reasoning. And this can be backed by user research validation, statistics, really anything that you find will help your logical argument and make sure that you avoid anything that's purely based on your personal opinions. For this example, I'll just put in some stats that I found during analytics research. That's about it, easy as that. You'll just continue to do that for anyone else that you believe to be in the presentation. Now that I've showed you the rational toolbox, I wanted to know a few things in order for all of this to work. This only really works if you have the opportunity to get to know and understand what your stakeholders really focus on but typically it's pretty easy to figure out, especially if you already know their job title and you work with them regularly. I could see this being a bit challenging for someone like a contractor who doesn't have easy access to all these stakeholders on a regular basis. At least for me, I was in an agency setting as the UX strategist, so I had a lot of intro calls, kickoff calls with our clients, and I was kind of able to identify all the significant patterns and things that they really liked harping on before presentation day. So that's just something to keep in mind or else it'll be really hard for you to put yourself in the stakeholder's shoes. Now, if this is for your internal members, it's a lot easier. If you have a presentation and you know, for instance, your developers are gonna be on the call, 
you'll know that they mostly care about different use cases, third-party integration and APIs, or any type of implementation concerns. So I would include that in your rational toolbox. And honestly, it's also a really great like teammate courtesy because then your developers know that you are acknowledging their goals while you're designing. Another thing is I wouldn't recommend reading this word for word. It's really just nice to have it next to you as kind of like a mental crutch and you'll find that you barely even look at it most of the time. I find that it's more just a mental thing to know that you have it nearby that makes you feel a lot more in control. Now I just want to quickly wrap it up on why I love this tool and why this tool is really helpful not even just for presentations and again I just want to mention that this is not the end all be all to presentation nerves like let's be real I still feel like hot garbage before a lot of my presentations but this just helps you feel a lot more in control and it just really helps ease those nerves the first one is guidance uh, when I was a junior designer and it was my first UX design job I would have to present like 10 different web pages in one single setting and things would get scrambled sometimes so it's just nice to know that I had this and I could look at it at any point in time during the presentation and then I'd get back on track. The second one for me is less panic. Obviously, this one is probably one of the most important ones if you have public speaking nerves. Just going through the exercise itself made you feel like you're much more in control of the situation and you felt like you didn't have to think so quickly on your feet all the time. I know at least for me when I was a junior designer, I was really afraid of having to like improvise essentially. So this was really great for those, oh my gosh, I'm panicking types of moments. The third one is case studies. This has nothing to do with public speaking nerves, but it's really great to have all this handy when you do build out your case study because then your reasoning and your rationale is already all listed out. All you have to do is plug and chug them into your portfolio. Finally, it helps you let go of that ego. Knowing that you're going to have to fill your rational toolbox at the end or during your design process really reminds you to not only push for your user's goals while you're designing, but also your stakeholders. So there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, this tool is a really great safety net and it's awesome to have, especially if you're new to UX design. The best part of it is that one day you're gonna find that you don't even need it. And let me know below in the comments if this is a tool that you could see yourself using. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Your armpits are stinky. Okay, your armpits are stinky. Ugh.